What's up gamers? It's Absurd here, and Armored Core 6 has been out for over a week, so I'm ready to venture into some spoiler territory, uncovering the lore and character of V4 Rusty, the bestest buddy you will ever have in Armored Core. My first impressions of Rusty while playing the game for the first time reminded me a lot of Joshua O'Brien from Armored Core 4, a chill dude who would be your bestie if you hadn't ended up on opposite sides of the battle lines drawn by the competing factions in the game. In Armored Core 4, the power of friendship isn't strong enough to overcome the inevitable conflict with O'Brien, but in Armored Core 6, there is a choice when it comes to Rusty, although it's a choice that he makes. I was fortunate to have chosen the Liberator of Rubicon route in my first playthrough. At face value, that title, Liberator of Rubicon, is intended for us when compared with the alternate ending, Fires of Raven. Rusty even says so near the end of that story path. But let's be real, Rusty is the real Chad on Rubicon. 621 is just his little buddy, and I love it. You might be thinking, we are the main character. We get to decide the fate of Rubicon, after all. And that's technically correct, but none of the endings are really our story. In all of the branches, we play as a pawn in someone else's game of chess until we end up at the end of the board and get promoted to a queen. Hell, we don't even have a real identity in the game. Sorry, Nightfall. But Rusty, though, he was never a pawn. It was always his game. While we are getting played by Walter, Air, the corporations, and All Mine, Rusty is the guy playing everyone. So let's uncover his history a bit, since like all FromSoft stories, it's not obvious without putting in some work. You may know some of this or all of it, but stick around either way. Remember him. We first hear about Rusty in an audio log between Walter and V2 Snail, in which Walter is trying to get us into Operation Wall Climber. Snail mentions they will be deploying V4 Rusty, who has been equally brazen of late. That's a rather innocuous line without further context, but implies that Rusty may not have a great relationship with the other Vespers, or isn't a team player. We properly meet Rusty during Operation Wall Climber, in which he spearheads a separate assault on the wall before meeting up with us to combat the Juggernaut. His designation as V4 means he leads the Vesper 4th Squad in combat. He meets up with us to tag team the Juggernaut, and is called away by Snail mid-fight, leaving us to finish the fight alone. After this mission, we get a private communication from Rusty. We're war buddies now. I think I should tell you something. During Operation Wall Climber, Archibus was planning to sacrifice you. The plan was to use independent mercenaries to clear the way so that the Vespers could step in and take over. But instead, you took the wall. The higher-ups are going to remember you now, that's for sure. As will I. This is our first clue that Rusty might actually be a team player, but the Vespers just aren't the team that he plays well with. On the following mission, we are hired by Balaam, who failed to climb the wall. They want us to explore Rusty's sector during Operation Wall Climber and recover data logs with intel about the Vespers. It is during this mission that we can learn a lot more about Rusty if all the relevant logs are recovered. Starting with the video record on Rusty's AC, Steel Haze, we see that he uses a light and mobile build but the remarkable thing about this is his weapon selection. Vespers typically employ energy type weapons, while Steel Haze is equipped with kinetic weapons. This deviation from the Vesper norm gives us another clue to Rusty being an outsider within the organization. 
Another log from a wreck shows the fallen AC's inability of the FCS to track Rusty in combat due to his speed. His AC is clearly very fast, but not too fast for us. The real intrigue begins when we find a video record of a communication attempt between one of the fallen MTs and Rusty during Operation Wall Climber. The opening line, how could you, implies betrayal. The pilot knows Rusty, who apparently is mentioned in Uncle's Files, meaning Uncle Flatwell of the Rubicon Liberation Front. This begins a thread of connection between the RLF and Rusty, the Vesper Outsider. Perhaps the most notable log we find on this mission contains Rusty's encoded comms to someone. I puzzled over decoding this message with Armored Core lore channel over Discord, and it seems to read something along the lines of, When the time comes, Furlong will develop the technology with Elcano. You must remain hidden until then. This may not be exact, but two things are pretty clear. Furlong and Elcano were working together on some technology, and Rusty was trying to protect someone. More curious still is that if you find this log, you will encounter an RLF AC piloted by Zee, who appears to have been hiding in this remote part of the mission area. Was this the RLF pilot who Rusty was talking to? I think so. In one of the next missions, Prisoner Rescue, in which you are hired by the RLF to escort a rescue chopper to recover RLF prisoners of war being held captive by Balaam, Zee is among those rescued. This confirms the fact that Zee was in danger, regardless of whether or not we encountered her in the data recovery mission, and counts as strong evidence that Rusty was in secret communication with the RLF about a secret project involving new technology. The secrecy of this project may come as no surprise when viewing a log from the mission Attack the Watch Point that mentions Furlong as pretending to be a neutral corporation, but refers to them as crafty foxes who never make a move in the open. A log found on the mission Investigate Baus Arsenal No. 2 records a Baus guard's last words, which confirm a link between Baus, the Rubiconians, and Elcano. Baus, who is described as responsible for arming the RLF, appears to be bankrolling Elcano on behalf of the RLF to conduct this secret transaction with Furlong. This will be important later. We meet Rusty a couple more times in the mid-game, once when we team up to attack the spaceport, take out some PCA elites, and encounter the sea worm. Then again, as we team up to take out the worm, and Rusty makes his Hail Mary shot so that we can kill it. I don't want to go deep into these encounters right now, but our kinship with Rusty grows and we get to see how badass he is again and again. Once the way is cleared, Archibus hires us to discover the Coral Convergence, but they want us dead again and send Rusty to finish the job. Rusty believes they want him dead as well, which isn't surprising considering the history we've uncovered so far. He is reluctant to fight us, but says Rubicon still needs him. I still hadn't figured it out yet during my first playthrough, but this is the most overt evidence so far that Rusty has been working for the Rubiconians all along. Out of the context of the other evidence, it's not easy to put together. But Uncle Flatwell, like he did with Furlong and Elcano, had pulled strings with Schneider Corporation to get Rusty sponsored to join the Vespers. Rusty worked from inside the Vespers, using his Schneider-built AC, Steel Haze, to keep tabs on the corporations in their search for the Convergence, but also to provide more military power for the RLF who doesn't have a top-of-the-line AC among their ranks, other than Rusty. This revelation sheds more light on Operation Wall Climber. Rusty recognizes us as one of Walter's hounds and says, Interesting. 
because we are a new piece on the board that he and Uncle Flatwell didn't account for in this undercover scheme. At that point, he is already trying to gauge whether we will be an asset or a threat to his plans. The scene in which we fight him seemingly solidifies us as a threat in his mind. There is an alternate version of the fight mission with Rusty in which we find this data log. It references a message for Uncle Flatwell about the continuing secret project between Furlong and Elcano, and suggests that the RLF knew Rusty came here to destroy us. In this alt mission, Flatwell shows up as we are fighting Rusty and attempts to stop the fight, mentioning how we are more than just a hound and have potential. This change in content fails, however, to affect the outcome. Rusty manages to escape using his legendary speed, and we don't hear from our buddy for a while. It's at this point in the game that we make a tough choice. But it's only tough if you don't know what's at stake. I mean, would anyone really choose to side with Walter and Carla if they knew they'd have to fight their best buddy Rusty? No. So me and all the other corrected gamers killed Carla and Chatty and got a new mission from Air to destroy the Xylem's drive block. She tells us in the brief that she's used our name to summon allies to our cause, but remains vague enough about it that I had no clue what to expect, if anything. Once we commence mission, we meet the real hero of the story again. A familiar shot of the AC's legs swooping into frame and panning up. It looks like the Gist of Honor's here. Hey, buddy. I never thought I'd be rubbing shoulders with the Liberator of Rubicon. Every Rubiconian who heard your cry rose up to fight. Hey buddy, it hit hard. And the Rusty theme hits even harder. He calls us the Liberator of Rubicon, but he's being modest. We know it's really him. He mentions how he never expected his plan to go so wrong. And it wouldn't have, except for us. After all, there's only one person who can keep up with Rusty. He shows up with a new AC partly because we kind of ruined his earlier, but his new AC was being planned all along. Remember Furlong and Elcano from the logs? Steel Haze Ortis. The new model is an Elcano build using an Alba frame, Viento needle gun, needle missile launcher, and a Balaam bullet orbit that incorporates the technology of an Archivist affiliate. All of these parts are developed off of Schneider technology, Rusty's original steel haze. The plan for this AC was in the works from the beginning, a plan designed to equip the eventual Liberator of Rubicon with the best AC on the market and take off the corporate muzzle Rusty had worn for so long. Sadly, FromSoft does Rusty dirty at the end of the mission. His signal cuts out, and it seems like he was ambushed, likely by the re-educated Walter we fight in the final mission. It's not certain he is dead, as we've defeated many ACs in combat, and they've returned. Not that we wanted to see them again. That's right, you heard me, Iguazu and Snail. Fuck off. But we don't hear from Rusty again in that ending, sadly. However, we do see Rusty again, and the wrong ending of the story, and it hurts me. Listening to his triumphant theme song while fighting to put our buddy down and continue mission was tough to do, but we'd cross the Rubicon, so to speak. No turning back, even when every last utterance of Buddy stings my heart. Buddy. 
We'd found a friend on Rubicon, and we killed him. Carla tells us to remember him, as if we could ever forget our buddy Rusty, Rubicon's goodest boy. <laughs>